Well, good evening, everybody. Um, had a thought that come to my head tonight, and I was, um, I don't remember when it was, but I was watching a YouTube video of the country singer uh George Jones. They they nicknamed him as the Possum. He was a great singer. I think he did get get saved before his life was over. But this particular video I watched showed his home. Um, it showed the layout of the property. I don't know how many acres he, he owned. Um, I don't really know what was his and what was the other neighbors that was living near him, but it showed the home that he had made, um, it showed the outside. It showed the staircase that leads up to the front door. It showed a lot of the rocking chairs on the front porch. Um, it showed the layout of around the house. It showed his pool. It showed uh, the garage. And you just keep going, and it actually had another house on the property. I assume that could have been the caretaker's home that he lived in. I assume it was. Um, it showed his garage, and it showed his three outbuildings of his I assume where it would park a tour bus. I mean, it looked pretty good size. One thing I noticed on his front porch is it was in brick. Uh, the way it looked to me, it was brick or stone. And it had the initials... Uh, George Jones embedded into the front porch. Um, it even showed his four wheeler in the barn. Um, it showed the inside of the house. It showed the place of where his albums was hanging on the wall. It showed, um, Uh, the bedroom suite, the kitchen, the bathroom. I mean, it went into detail of everything about the house. And it was a nice layout. I mean, it wasn't nothing real elaborate, but it was elaborate. In my opinion, it was elaborate, but... Um, another video came on, and the other video showed his burial plot. It showed how that he was buried in a regular cemetery, but it was down near the end of a stone wall, and it looks like that Either he owned it beforehand, but it's got a nice arch. I mean, a giant arch up in the air and back down. And it shows his grave, grave plot. And it showed the covering of the grave of a massive piece of literature. I couldn't tell what was printed on it. But you can tell that it has another place 
for his wife beside of him. And this whole area was only just them two people. And it was down at the end of where other graves was. And it was sort of had the backdrop of the stone. And like I say, I saw it and I thought, you know, the man had an elaborate setup. And I started thinking about rich people. I rode up the highway today and I saw a lot of campers. I saw a lot of boats. I saw $70,000 trucks pulling $40,000 campers. Um, it's just amazing. Um, as I traveled up the road and I saw a bunch of motorcycles go by and I just thought, you know, even that is not the answer to man's problem. Um, Mr. George left behind that beautiful home. He left it all behind. He left all his clothes. He left all of his possessions. He left all of his money. Um, he left it all. Now, no doubt they put the man away very nicely, I assume. His casket is probably one of the most expensive caskets that they are. But it's down in the ground with a vault over the top of it. And his body is laying there until the Lord comes and gets him. That is, if he really got saved. And I think maybe he very well could have. I think the story is, is that he did get saved. But I'm thinking of another man. There was a man in the book of Luke, chapter 16, that was a rich man, a certain rich man. You'll find his story in Luke chapter 16. You will also find a man that was a beggar in Luke chapter 16. That rich man died and that beggar died. And that rich man left all of his possessions. He left his home. He left his barn. He left all of his wealth and money. He left it all. All of it. All of it was left behind. Um, somebody else. got to put the possession of all that he had. It doesn't go into detail in Luke 16 what all happened to his wealth. It really didn't matter then. His wealth wasn't his anymore. His wealth was somebody else's. Somebody else inherited all the wealth that that man accumulated you know I don't know why I, I'm going this way tonight but I felt like that you know the Bible talks about an appointed time of death no amount of money could keep George alive no doubt he had probably a lot of money, and he no doubt probably had the best health care. But the time would come that he would breathe his last breath. And when he did, he left it all behind. Now, if he knew the Lord, 
He's got something way better than all of this niceness of his home. It showed evidently where he sat the most was in a certain room with a recliner and a big, nice, giant screen TV. I mean, it showed everything about his possession, but he don't have that now. His possession has been left behind. And I started thinking that, you know, there's people that are not near as wealthy as, as George Jones. But, you know, if something was to happen to their life, they leave everything behind. They leave their clothes. They leave their money. They leave their property. They leave their possession. They leave their vehicles. They leave everything behind. At that time, nothing is valuable at that time. Somebody else, some other family member, ends up getting all of the possessions that we leave behind. I've got property that property will be left behind if something happens to me. That property is not going with me. I can't bury myself on my property. George decided to be put in a cemetery, and that's where he's at right now. As nice and beautiful a place as he had, it's not doing him one bit of good today. See, this rich man saw the need of that beggar every day. And that beggar was laid at the gate of that rich man. And that rich man, no doubt, thought that he was doing a good deed of the day by allowing that beggar to have a little bit of his leftovers. It talks about the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. I don't happen to believe it was crumbs. I believe it was things that the man that was wealthy didn't want to eat anymore. We cooked hamburgers on my little grill yesterday. And we happened to have cooked four of them. My wife ate one, I ate two, and there's one left. My mother-in-law decided she didn't want it. And tomorrow, I will eat that other hamburger. And it'll be good. Because the other three was good. It turned out to be a beautiful tasting burger on that little grill that I bought. But see, everything that we have in this life is going to be left behind. The only thing that George could have taken with him when he died was the saving of his soul, the Lord Jesus Christ. That would have been the only thing that would have been valuable to George on that day when he took his last breath was his acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet today, people don't think it's that big a deal. Some people don't think that it's not that big a deal. I mean, you know, let's live life. Them $70,000 trucks pulling them $40,000 campers. Honestly, it did not impress me. I mean, was I, was I lusting after their camper and their truck? Would it be nice to have a camper and a $70,000 truck? I'll be honest with you. It made me happy to know that my vehicle I have in my yard out there right now is paid for. My 2002 Ford four-wheel drive is paid for. 
It looks good. It drives good. It's reliable. It's been dependable. But I don't have the debt on that. And if something was to ever happen to me, that will be left for someone else to enjoy. The place here will be someone else's to enjoy. The property, no doubt, will be someone else's someday. But let me tell you why I'm making this video. Because I know the Lord Jesus, what he has waiting on me is a whole lot better than what George Jones ever ever thought to have. I'm using him as an example. I'm not judging the man. I believe he did get saved. I believe that if he could come right now and tell us today the value of what heaven is over than what all he had here, it would be no comparison. See, all the stuff that he had here left him behind. It's no longer with him. The mansion that he has today is his forever. It never goes away. But yet, people don't see the value of that today. We're not looking at the value of life hereafter. All most of us are thinking about is life right now today. You know, I made up my mind that I wanted life eternal. And like I say, them nice trucks today and them campers and them motorcycles and them boats that I saw on the interstate didn't impress me because all of them campers will break down. All of them trucks will break down eventually. All of them motorcycles, as fast as they was going, might very well get in a fender bender. I mean, every possession that we have is subject to be somebody else's tomorrow. Are you taking advantage of the story in Luke chapter 16? I would ask you to go read Luke 16. Go read the story about the rich man and Lazarus. Go ask Lazarus if what he got today in Abraham's bosom is a whole lot better than what he had eating at the gate of the rich man. See, the rich man no doubt thought that he was doing Lazarus a, a, a good deal because he would allow him to eat his leftovers. You know, the Bible talked about that he ate the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. That is when he had something to feed him they would take it out to Lazarus for him to eat. There would be certain days that Lazarus probably didn't get nothing to eat. But let me tell you, he's eating of the table of God today. Now his body is still in the ground. George is still in the ground. The Apostle Paul was still in the ground. Luke, that wrote this particular book right here, is still in the ground. But their spirit, man, is with the Lord. Where would your spirit, man, be if you died today? The Most of the clothes that I have is ragged out. I don't know that many people would even want the stuff that I have. But you know what? I won't have to worry about it because I will be gone. I won't know who wears my shoes. Remember the song that George, I think it was George that wrote it. Who's going to fill my shoes? 
Well, you know, some rich person could buy that house of George Jones and own it and leave it just like he left it and let it be a tribute to the man that put it there, that built it, that put it there for him. But what happens when that person that buys it dies? What happens to the home at that time? What happens to the possession at that time? Who's going to end up with your possessions? You know what? If you know the Lord tonight, you don't have to worry about who ends up with your possessions because you won't care. Honestly, I could care less what happens to this place, the house, the land, the vehicles. I honestly could care less because my time has come for me to leave this world. And see, this man here, the rich man, reached out to this beggar and asked him to let me dip my finger in water and cool my tongue. Let Lazarus come and dip his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in these flames. People, that's a picture of dying without the Lord. That rich man is going to be called up before the Lord on that final day, and he's going to get his judgment that he is rightfully due. But he's in judgment now, awaiting his sentence. It's a lot like a person being in jail, waiting on death row for his sentence, the sentence of death. See, the Lord is going to see to it that he passes judgment. Here's, here's my message in a nutshell. Don't leave this world with your concern of your possessions because your possessions will not follow you. I don't care how poor you are or how rich you are. Your possessions won't follow you. It will be left here. There was a man that I knew by name that when he passed away, his life ended, and he had a lot of books. He ended up giving away them bunch of books to a friend of his that thought that he would treasure them books, and he gave them away. The library that he had is no more. They've been all moved to another location. What's going to happen to that man when that man dies? Who's going to get his books? Don't let nobody rob your Savior from you. If you know the Lord, let him take you to glory. Elderly Ministry is the website. You can go there and look me up. YouTube is available that you can find the videos online. Leave a message when you call. I'll be glad to talk with you. Thank y'all for watching.